Hello and welcome back to the Kilohertz Mercedes channel. Now how are you all safe and well? So today's video you join me once again with my CLS 63. In this video I'm going to be doing another product review of another Mercedes diagnostic system. This time it's called the iCarSoft which is the MB 2.0 version which has been kindly sent to me for review. So out looking on the forums and so on this seems to be the most popular DIY diagnostic tool out there for Mercedes. So I'm going to go through do an unboxing check all the different features and options it has, as well as give my final thought. Now this is the second diagnostic tool I've reviewed on the channel, the first being the Carly. And if you haven't seen that video, that's up on the link up here. And Carly is a diagnostic system as well, but this differs as it's actually for your phone and it has a dongle. So it'll be interesting to compare the two to see which one's best or which one has the best options. So let's get started. Okay, so let's have a look inside the box to see exactly what you get. It comes packaged in a neat little protective carry case. Opening up, we have a small instruction manual. I'll take a look through that shortly. And also a couple of cables, first an OBD2 to serial connector cable and also a micro USB power cable. Now getting to the actual unit, first up it kind of reminds me of one of those 90s handheld video games machines, like the Sega Game Gear. The unit itself appears to be built from a strong, hard-wearing plastic case. And looking on the bottom, we have a mini USB connector, next to a micro SD card slot complete with a memory card already inserted. No doubt this contains the actual unit's firmware or it's for when you save error codes and scan information. And then on the top side, the old style serial port which you plugged in the OBD cable to. With the ignition on to the third position, and the device correctly plugged into the OBD port in the footwell, it's now time to test this device to see what it can do. From this main home screen, you can see it has a number of options clearly visible. This is not a touch screen, but the navigation buttons are easy to use and it's clear to work your way around the system. So let's begin with the first default option, Diagnostics, followed by a couple of screens you press enter through. Navigate down this list until you'll see your car listed, mine being a 218 CLS. Continue through the various options, selecting the fuel type and the exact model of your car. As with all these systems, scanning takes a minute or so to carry out. So with the scan complete, listed are all the various control modules for the car. In fact, on my car there are 28 of them listed. Clicking on an individual module displays this screen where you can read any faults, clear any faults or get module information. Luckily for me, it hasn't found any faults. Now I can't really make a video on a fault clearing device without actually fully testing it. I figured the easiest way to create a fake error was to disconnect the rear parking sensors. Now I did this by disconnecting the wiring loom which is hidden behind the boot trim. Switch the ignition back on once again and rescan the car. Then I selected the Parktronic system from the list of modules and then reread the fault codes. As you can see, immediately it has now picked up that the sensors are malfunctioning. Not only that, but an error code is also displayed at the top for each fault. Pressing F2, as indicated on the lower right of the screen, allows you to save this fault for later use. This can be especially useful if you have an intermittent code which comes and goes, or if you manually clear the code and you want to view it at a later date. Back on the front screen once again, you can view and retrieve these stored error codes via the review menu at any time. And here is the fake stored error code which I saved earlier. 
Anyway, let's continue with the video. Back to the data menu with its live readouts. And I'll quickly show you what data readouts it provides. Selecting the view data option gives you very useful live data readouts as you can see here. As my car is fitted with the rear airmatic suspension, it even displays the live pressure readouts of each suspension turret, which is pretty handy should you suspect that you have an air leak. Heading back to the main page, the next option that you're mainly going to use is the check engine light option. So basically if you've already got a check engine light displayed on your dashboard, use this option and it will tell you exactly what the error is. Nothing is showing because disconnecting the Parktronic system doesn't show a check engine light. So instead of going through every single option and making this video far too long, I'll just quickly show you a couple of the other key features. Reset service lights, both the main service as well as the oil changes, brake bleeding, injector cleaning and swapping and also DPF replacements. Interestingly, it also shows you how to do this manually with the instructions on the dashboard or you can get the system to do it itself. Next we'll briefly look at the voltage menu. Now this menu gives you a live readout directly from the battery showing you in real time how much current's coming from it. Together with the wave option which shows you a live graph this is particularly useful if you're testing the battery draw and drain with different components on the car. You can see it in real time. And last but not least, here is the DTC or Diagnostic Trouble Code menu. This is a basic search tool to check the system's database of all the fault codes. Typing in a code here should give a basic description of what the code means. Ok so that pretty much covers all the basic features of the unit. Now there are one or two other little bits and pieces which I didn't cover in the video to prevent the video from going on for too long. So anyway, overall, final thoughts. Um, I must say this is an excellent unit. I thoroughly recommend it um, in anyone's toolbox. For the odd, for the DIYer, the home user, this is perfect. I mean, it's nice and rugged. As I say, you can easily see this in your toolbox. Um, very easy to use. The menus are very self-explanatory. You've got to have no experience with um, any coding before. You'll be, you'll be fine. Now, you, of course, as I mentioned on the Carly video, you're never going to get all the features and coding abilities which you get on for a star diagnostic or a Zentry system. There's a reason why they're thousands of pounds. But for just fault coding at home and doing a bit of diagnostic, this is perfect. Um, can't recommend it enough. Now, I've got to guess I could compare it to Carly, um, as Carly is its sort of closest competitor. Now, Carly is an excellent system as well. It's got some brilliant little features where you can instantly Google and all that kind of thing. But the comparison between the two, um, I'd say that this actually takes it. Uh, the reason being is that Carly recently went to a subscription-based system to buy the actual unit. It's about half the price of this. But then when you factor in a uh, subscription fee, and let's be honest, if you're a home user, you're not gonna be using this daily. It's only as and when. That said, both Carly and the iCarsoft offer around the same levels of diagnostic and code clearing abilities as each other. Carly's interface, however, is faster than the iCarsoft and perhaps even slightly easier to use and more user friendly, due to it using a phone's interface and touchscreen rather than the standard button layout, so Carly wins in that respect. Overall though, it's just a question of whether you prefer to pay the cost up front or over a monthly subscription. Now I thoroughly recommend both of these diagnostic systems to anyone. Okay, so in the UK, this retails for around about £125 or so. However, if you check in the description below, there's an exclusive kilohertz discount code, so you can get some money off the unit. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like it, please give it a thumbs up, as well as clicking on that subscribe button and bell icon, so you're notified as soon as uploading your new videos and content. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, cheers.